Hi, this is Auke Plantinga. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can do a multivariate Monte Carlo uh, within Excel. And so I'm mainly going to explain to you how you can generate a sequence of returns for, let's say, two assets uh, that have a specific correlation, expected return and standard deviation. Um, yeah, so uh, to do, let's say, more advanced stuff in the simulation, like mm, several replications, etc., etc. I think you should watch my other video on this, but let's first see on how this works with creating a multivariate normal distribution, or using that to generate uh, a sequence of returns. So in order to do that, I'm going to use this specific spreadsheet. And I'm considering uh, two assets, uh, asset one that has a standard deviation of 20% and an expected return of 5%. And I have asset two that has an expected return of 30% and a, uh, sorry, that has a standard deviation of 30% and an expected return of 8%. And so finally, another input is the correlation between the two assets and that is 0.6. And so the purpose of all of this is essentially to generate a sequence of returns. I'm browsing through what I've generated here. So let's, one, let's take 120 returns. And then for two uh, assets with the specifications that I gave in the yellow box at the left top corner of the screen. And so... If I look at, let's say, the sample run, so the characteristics uh, of the uh, two return distribution, the two return series I generated, you can see that this specific sample had an a uh, standard deviation of 18.2% and a uh, standard deviation of 32.1% for S2, and the joint correlation between S1 and 2 is 0.52. So this is the result of generating uh, a, uh, returns from a multivariate normal distribution. And if I press F9 on the screen of my Excel, I'll get another draw. And so you can see that now the numbers have slightly changed. Um, so whatever happens whenever I press F9, I'm doing it again, you see that I get numbers that are kind of roughly in the neighborhood of the initial parameters, although I mean they can differ, differ substantially. So now I have a correlation of 0.714 while the initial setting is 0.6. So, and if I uh, want to do a Monte Carlo simulation, I could replicate this, you know, multiple times, for instance, to, to generate the impact of a constant mixed strategy or whatsoever. So, in order to do this, I need to take a sequence of steps and I'm going to move back to the PowerPoint to show you the steps that I need. So what I'd like to do is generate returns for two assets that have the same characteristics as the observed empirical data or perhaps some priors I have. And I can do that using a simple uh, 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 equation. This one is in matrix algebra terms. So uh, the return vector of uh, the two assets, in this case it's a uh, column vector with two rows, is equal to mu, the initial specified expected return, so you could say the, the, uh, the theoretical underlying distribution, plus some matrix called C times a column vector Z. And this is an interesting specification because C is the Koleski transformation of the covariance matrix. That's a magical thing, so I'll pay some attention to that later. And Z is a factor of random returns drawn from a standard normal distribution. Okay, so what is this all? Well, I think the most complicated thing if it is complicated, but you may not, not have heard of it, is the Koleski transformation. And so what is it? Uh, well, essentially, it is a trick. It's a trick to 
decompose the original covariance matrix, which is specified as omega here, into two matrices, actually a matrix C multiplied by a matrix C transformed. And the matrix C is what we call a lower triangular matrix, which means that all the numbers below the main diagonal are numbers, you know, like and the ones at the right, the upper triangle, are zeros. And so for a two by two matrix, this is kind of pretty easy to do this yourself, you know. So suppose this is my covariance matrix, sigma one squared, sigma one two, and sigma two squared. Then I'm looking for some matrix with A, B, and C, which if I multiply it with its transposed, it should give me essentially the covariance matrix. And so, for instance, I know that A squared is sigma one squared. So A one is in my example, uh, 20%. Um, well, I can solve the rest, of course, you know, because if I know that A is 0.20, then I know that I can figure out a B uh, uh, from this AB. AB is essentially sigma 1, 2, so that's 0 0.036 divided by 0 0.2 gives me essentially 0 0.18, and so, and so on, and so on. So I can easily solve that. You know, I put this in my little spreadsheet here, so you can see here my Koleski decomposition. Um, and you can see here how I formula f uh, solved that. So A is indeed the square root of sigma 1 squared. Uh, B is essentially 0 0.036 divided by uh, 0.2. And then, of course, finally, a C is essentially the square root of, uh, sorry, uh, th that's not the square root of, it's 0 0.09 minus um, uh, the square root of b, and that gives me 0.24. Okay, uh, so this gives me the Koleski decomposition, which I need. And so here we get at the next steps. So the first step is specify the input parameters to prepare the Koleski decomposition. Now I'm going to generate the random normal distributions, uh, the, the returns from the nine, uh, uh, standard normal distribution. And I'm using for that norm.inf uh, rand uh, semicolon 0 semicolon 1. That means I'm transforming a random number between 0 and 1. That's what rand uh, and the two brackets does, it generates a random number between 0 and 1, and it transforms that into a number coming from the standard normal distribution. Then, in these two columns, I am starting, I'm making that into numbers from the normal distribution with mean equal to 5 and 8%, so you can see here, transpose C2, C3, so I make from this which is a column vector, I make a row vector, plus transpose matrix multiply H3I4, that's the Koleski decomposition, and then multiply that with essentially the numbers from the standard normal distribution, and get, that gives me this number. And so this is the way to do it. Um, yeah, you can play a bit with it and see how it works. Uh, press F9 a couple of times, you know, it's kind of fun to see how these numbers kind of match, you know. Um, so I hope that this was useful for you and uh, good luck with your work. Thank you very much.